All right, ladies and gentlemen, in order to be successful for today's instruction, you need to have a whiteboard, your focus, and your study guide. Please and thank you. How about the one that's on your desk? Okay, so um, today after school, I should have told you yesterday, but I don't think I did. Today after school, we have a Holocaust survivor speaking here at Plant High School, which is pretty incredible. Um, she's speaking today at 345. I'm going. A ton of my sophomores are going and a lot of other upperclassmen, so it's not just you, me, and a bunch of sophomores. Uh, so if you have time today after school, I would definitely, definitely come. Um, her story is a living history, and as soon as the last Holocaust survivor, that history will die and becomes a silent history only can be found in books. And every single day, Holocaust survivors are dying at an incredibly fast rate because they're in their 90s, which makes logical sense, just like our World War II vets are dying at an incredibly fast rate as well. Um, there will come a time when we will have no one alive during World War II who fought in it or any of the survivors of the Holocaust. So if you are available today after school, I would definitely, definitely go. Uh, it's at 345. It's for an hour. It will definitely be worth your time because, frankly, you are losing the opportunity to hear one speak. Uh, I think this will be my second or my third Holocaust speaker that I've heard, and I am so excited because it is something that you need to hear about, and uh, we have to keep this legacy alive because in 2020 we have anti-semitism flourishing all around the world and if we clearly haven't learned our lessons from the 1940s hopefully we can be reminded of what those lessons are so today 345 auditorium on your whiteboard here we go on your whiteboard please tell me what is an effect of an unpleasant or undesirable stressor like for instance your girl's breaking out that is my symbol of stress. What is it, Drew? Distress. Distress. What is it called? It's the effect of positive events or the optimal amount of stress that people need to promote health and well-being. What is that, Sophia? You stress. All right. What requires two appraisals, a primary appraisal and a secondary appraisal? I use this. Please don't. I used this to describe the stress I had for my dinner on Friday. I talked about how my primary appraisal was looking at how could things go poorly at this dinner with my arch nemesis. So I planned out getting dessert, I bought flowers, I even picked out my outfit. Okay, And then on the way there, McCray and I sat there and we discussed how to exit conversations if we are forced to avoid something? The answer is what, Maggie? Yeah, cognitive appraisal approach, which is on the back of your study guide, by the way. It's towards the bottom. Lazarus's cognitive appraisal approach. Okay, on your whiteboard, please tell me, it is a disorder resulting from exposure to major stressor with the symptoms of anxiety, nightmares, poor sleep, uh, reliving the event, and concentration problems. We typically hear about this with in regards to our military. Uh, however, we can affect it, normal people like you and I, if we have tra uh, terrible car accidents, things like that. What is it, Dennis? PTSD. PTSD. On your whiteboard. After your first divorce, that was me implying you're going to get a divorce. Did you see that? See how slick that was? Your, your therapist is going to give you an assessment to measure the amount of stress in your life. What is that a measurement called, Bernstein? SRRS. SRRS. So, the tag on this shirt. So, I'm just going to tell you, I hate this shirt, but it's one of the few shirts that fit. So, here we are. Um, and I'm just uncomfortable in it, and I just hate it, and it just bothers me. So I'm just annoyed. What do we call little things that just bother us that are just annoying? They're what, Carly? Hassles. What's a hassle you have? Waking up. <laughs> That's a burden, not a hassle, my love. It wouldn't be so great. Today, never mind, we have lots to do. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is it called when you take out one's frustrations on something less threatening or on a more available target? Like, for instance. Good. What is it? Samuel. 
There you go. What is it called if you're one of the idiots who gets stressed and then decides to go sleep it off? Because that solves nothing. Then you wake up with more stress. Don't you agree? When you're asleep. What is it, Claire? Withdrawal. withdrawal. Uh, I, I wrote escape. Yeah, escape withdrawal is the same thing. It'll be giving you both options on the same like list. Um, what is it called when you have two positive things to choose from? Good. What is it, Rex? There you go. Uh, this is where we left off, isn't it, yesterday? We didn't finish all three, did we? Okay, so here we go. All right, so we talked about approach approach, which is when you have two positive things to choose from. Do you get, you get to choose between blueberry cobbler and apple pie, which are two of my faves, by the way. Those are approach approach. Then you have avoidance avoidance. Avoidance avoidance is when you have two terrible options. Do you want to get punched in the face or kicked in the shin really hard? If you've ever been kicked in the shins really hard, you know that is going to last for a hell of a long time. Because when you bruise your shin bones, it doesn't really heal that well because every time you walk, you put pressure on your shin bones, which means the blood that is now pooling on your shin bones is now affected. That is coming from the words of a soccer player. Played soccer competitively, you know this is a fact. What position did you play? I was a mini. So, avoidance avoidance is when you have two choices that suck. Approach avoidance. This is the kicker to this one, ladies and gentlemen. It is when you have to make a decision about one thing. Do you get the dog or not? Do you get a new puppy or not? You look at the pros and cons of getting a puppy. Having a puppy is amazing because they're adorable and they're so stupid, it's hilarious. However, the cons of a puppy is they have to go out like 15,000 times a day. Especially if you live on a condo. Do you know how much of a pain it is to take a dog that day? A huge pain. Because like you gotta go, like I live on the seventh story, so you gotta go down the elevator and out, and you gotta put like real clothes on. You know, you can't just like walk out of your backyard like looking like a complete bum because you know people. It's terrible. Okay? And I don't like talking to people. So when you have a puppy, guess what everyone wants to do? Pet it and talk to you. Like, oh my god, how old's your puppy? Seriously? Does it look like it's old? No, it's young. Who cares? Lots of cons. Don't get a puppy until you're ready to have a puppy. That's approach avoidance. It's one thing that you're looking at both the pros and the cons. <coughs> then you have double approach avoidance. That's when you're looking at multiple things. This is what you're going to have to do when you finally, uh, if you're a senior. Who's the senior in here? You're all juniors? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, next year, you'll all have to make a choice between what universities you're going to. So double approach avoidance is you're probably going to get boiled down to the same two stereotypical ones here at Plain High School, either between Florida or FSU. That's exactly how I feel current. She's like, hell no, where do you want to go? No, I wasn't saying that. Like, I just like... Oh, I, I heard. I was writing like... I was hoping you had that reaction about Florida. That's how I feel about Florida. Why do you feel that way about Florida? Because... Florida's I will tell you. So, most of you are going to get caught between FSU and Florida, just stereotypically. Like, I'm not trying to put anyone in a box here. With that being said, you're going to have to look at it. There are pros and there are cons to FSU. Pros, you're not in Florida, so that's nice. Cons, Tallinnasty is a real thing. <laughs> Tallinnasty is a real thing. However, if you are interested in politics, FSU is exactly where you need to be because it's in our state capital, and that's going to help propel you to maybe national politics if that's where your goal is. Okay? Florida, pros. It is really good at the sciences, okay? It is really good at the sciences. It is uh, cons. People who go to Florida are the cons. 
Florida people are the worst. So if you go to Florida, you're surrounded by people who go to Florida, and that's the worst. They're terrible. Have you met anyone who wears Florida gear all the time? Have you met, like, families where both parents went to Florida? They're so passionate about it. Next time you see a kid wearing all Florida gear, talk to that kid. Then you'll be like... He will instantly do this. I'm so happy. It is. They're awful. Do you apply to Florida? No, I refuse. I, 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 it's not like I'm a jaded person and didn't get into Florida. I never applied because I came down to Florida from Massachusetts. And the whole, like, uh, just like Plant, not as affluent as Plant is, but, like, pretty much everyone's dream school was Florida. And all the kids I hated wanted to go to Florida. And I was like, I can't be surrounded by these morons. So I didn't apply. I got and I wanted to go to FSU, but Flagler gave me free. And your girl's poor, and she wanted to be a teacher. So free is for me. Here we are. Anyway. Okay, so when you're looking at two things, between Florida and FSU, you're looking at the pros and cons. Let's be honest, Gainesville sucks. It's in the middle of nowhere. And, like, you're surrounded by, like, rural areas. There's nothing around you. But you make your choice. Then you have multiple approach avoidance, is when you're looking at three or more things. So if you got into Florida, FSU, and you got into Stetson, I don't think Stetson's on your radar, but here we are. Um, you know, that is uh, an option. Stetson, actually, one of my best friends went to Stetson. I had a great time visiting her at Stetson. I had a great time. Dimension. Downtown Deland gets interesting at night. We had a great time. I love Stetson. Only warm thoughts. Multiple yeah. approaches when you're looking at three or more things. Uh, so, like, you're uh, going to apply to a I bunch of schools next year. Too. Yeah. So, like, That's next true. year, you're going to apply to probably four or five schools, right? That's the average. Then when you, if you get into all five, four or five of them, then you have to look at each one and figure out which one you want. Why? What's your, what's the goal? <laughs> no, there's no goal. <laughs> there's no goal? You're right. What is, what rights are you talking about? Just decisions And where, what's your dream? Is it Florida? Uh, no, I don't know. Rex has a, his family has a practice field. The Florida football practice field is named after his family. So, like, I don't know if I want to go to Florida or not. I don't know if I want to. You know, it sounds so, like you've got a legacy there, friend. It sounds like you'll yeah, be there anyway. Yeah, I'll be way back, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll give you that choice at that point. All right, here we go. Guys, or general adaption syndrome. I will tell you right now, a lot of your test is on this Tomorrow, I would say three or four questions is on that. Which you happen to know is a lot for one of my tests. Can we agree? So, general adaption syndrome is the three stages of how the body's physiological reaction to stress, including alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. Now, I don't think I, I haven't told you this story yet. However, I was a lifeguard from the age of 16 to 20. Have I told you that? Yeah. Thank oh, okay. And I used to have the most beautiful tan. It was wonderful. It was so gorgeous. And my hair was so blonde. It was great. However, it was uh, the pool I worked at required one piece bathing suits. I don't think you understand. Swimmers do. Maggie, I cannot tell you how white my belly was. And I don't think it's evened out yet. And I stopped doing lifeguarding when I was 21. 20. It is, I was so dark and then so pale. Like when you went to the beach on the weekend, oh my God, it was horrific. But you had to try to even it out, you know? Like you had to try, it was terrible. Anyway, I was a lifeguard and um, I have made multiple pop-in rescues, like countless, probably hundreds of them, where a kid is like struggling and then you just jump in and you pick the kid up. That's not a hero. <laughs> then you get, like, the kid, you put him on the side, and you're like, you shouldn't be doing that. And the kid's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then two seconds later, guess what the kid's doing? <laughs> that is a pop-in rescue. And it happens 10,000 times, like, in a, like, a normal career. All that. I've only been involved in one bull-out rescue. It's a hero. That was a hero. Was it the running guy? The running guy? No, 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 this is like while I was lifeguarding. So this is my pool over here. 
This is the pool I worked oh at. <laughs> what, I drew it out for last period. It's not like I had it up there. So, there is pool uh, station A and station B, and this is where the front shack was, like the entryway. So we have the shallow water, which had a nice curve, and then we have uh, the deep end, which has all the swimming lanes, of course. So, I'm in station B working on my tan, and of course I have a buoy across my legs, but you've got to, like, pace the buoy. So you don't have like a nice like tan line like right there, you know, you gotta keep it practice. Believe me, in four years I got it down. So I'm sitting at my station B and Allie is sitting at station A. Allie is now a nurse practitioner and uh, she lives up in North Carolina now. So I was at my station, a little boy named Max who is six years old at the time. Max is not allowed to be in the deep end and he was supposed to only be in the shallow end. Well, Max decided he wanted to jump into the deep end, so he sits on the side of the pool and pushes himself into the deep end thinking he would grab the side. He didn't grab the side. So, I'm sitting over here, Allie's sitting over here, and it's in her far out peripheral and it's in my further vision. Allie sees him first. So, I hear the whistle blare, and I see Allie leap up and run for it. I'm sitting across from her and I'm like, holy shit, what is happening? I'm officially in my alarm stage. The alarm stage, which you should be writing down here, is when I become fully aware of what is happening and everything is moving quickly. Like information is coming very quickly at me and everything becomes incredibly clear. I see Allie running with her buoy and she jumps into the pool and picks up the kid. I know as um, the secondary responder, my job is to get to Allie as quick as possible. So I get off my chair and I'm hauling ass, uh, butt, all the way around the pool deck and I get to over here. By the time I get to her in the corner, she has the kid. The kid is non-responsive. He was down there for probably a good minute or two. Don't yeah, worry. yeah, he was not. He was, like, had blue lips, the whole thing. So Allie brings him to the corner, and I go, and I pick him up. We do the cross-hand things. I pull him up and onto, onto the deck, okay? So all of a sudden, I see this kid named Nick. Nick, when the, the, I told you the shack was right here, Nick was in the shack and stepped out of the shack, saw the shit was going down, and guess what he did? Stood there. Did nothing. Stood there. So I'm over here. I'm the secondary responder. So Allie's the one trying to get in there and figure out exactly what's happening. She's checking the pole. She's doing all this stuff. And I'm yelling at Nick to call 911. Like, call 911. Call 911. And he's like, what am I supposed to do? Call 911 would be the best thing. So anyway, so Nick finally runs back in the shack and calls 911. So now I'm in resistance. Me and Allie are both in resistance. Thank God our training actually kicked in. Allie, thank God, was primary responder, and I was secondary. Now, if I had to be a primary, I think I could have done it, but I'm so grateful I was secondary because she got to call the shots. She's like, I'm doing the breathing, you're doing the pacing. I'll count you out. So I'm sitting there, and I'm doing the compressions uh, on the chest, 15 to 2 breaths. We're going back and forth, and she's the one holding up his, uh, holding up his jawbone and breathing in. Now, at this point, we have a massive crowd around us, and me and Allie are sitting there, and we are pumping 15 to 2. We're doing our pumps perfectly. She's doing the breathing. We're in full resistance mode, which means we are clear, we are focused, and only dealing with things we have to. Me and Allie could have been surrounded by a million people or no one. We were right there doing exactly what we needed to do with clarity and concise movements. Now, it felt like 45 minutes, but apparently between the time we pulled the kid out and the time the paramedics came, it was only about eight minutes. As the paramedics were walking onto the dock, the kid coughed which is still one of the best sounds I've ever heard in my life. The kid coughed, his name is Max, we rolled him on his side and then he puked all over our deck because he was filled with water and he just ate stuff. all that puked all over our deck. The greatest sound, one of honestly the greatest sounds I've ever heard is that kid cough because that means we did something. Europe. We saved him. Europe. Allie saved him. I was helpful. 
Okay, the paramedics walk onto the pool deck. They come, they get him, they do their quick little analysis. They put him on the, um, the gurney and then they roll him out. And as the, we're leaving, you know, the paramedics say, nice job, girls. And so Allie and I just look at each other and we're like, okay. So then my boss arrives, okay, from she had to, she wasn't here. She got the call to come. So she comes and she's like, we need to do a breakdown of exactly what happened. So me and Allie go into a back room and then we write a report for about an hour and 15 minutes where we go from top to bottom exactly what happened, how it happened, why it happened, all of these different types of things. And we sit there and we do the report. And after we finish the report, my boss gets up, gives me a huge hug and gives Allie a huge hug and says, well done ladies, nice job. So then me and Allie just look at each other and then we both just start crying. <laughs> That's the end of our resistance, is what I'm saying. There's no more clarity at this point. So I call my mommy. I'm 18, 19, 19, 19. I call my mommy, and I'm crying, which I'm not really a crier, especially to other people. In my own shower, absolutely, but like to other people, no. I call my mommy, and I'm crying, and I'm like, Mommy, come pick me up. And she's like, why do you need me to pick you up? I was like, Mommy, come pick me up. So my mommy comes and picks me up. <laughs> she lives like, their house is like two miles from my, the pool. So my mommy comes and picks me up, and I tell her what happened on the car, and I sit down at the counter of my kitchen, my parents' kitchen, and I sit there and I cry for a good 15 minutes with my mom, because my mom is just like so proud of me and horrified, and I'm so stressed out. And then I was like, Mommy, I'm going to bed now. And I literally, in my bathing suit, just crawled into bed, and I slept for like 15 hours. That's exhaustion. That's exhaustion. It is after a traumatic event, your body just completely collapses into long, long periods of sleep to recover from the stress. So, Max obviously survived, thank God. He survived, and about a week later, he came to the pool with flowers for me and Allie and these cute little balloons that said thank you. And we got a picture taken. Now, Max happened to go to the same elementary school that my mom taught at. So I've kind of followed Max, and he knows my mom because of me. And um, so Max is in college right now. Oh, my God. I'm old as hell. So that is the only major save that I've ever had, and I will love to never do that shit again. It was absolutely traumatic and incredibly scary. But that is general adaption syndrome. The alarm is that, holy shit, what's happening? You know that kick to the gut when you're like, oh my god, something's happening? And then that paying attention and like trying to pick, like everything starts clicking really quick and you're like, oh my god, this is what's happening? That resistance is when everything kind of stops and clear so you can focus on what you have to focus on. You don't care about anything else in the world. That clarity of that moment, knowing what you're doing, how to do it, what needs to be done. And then that recovery is just like someone pulled the plug on you. And you're just like, and out. And then I woke up and my mommy had made me a feast of food and it was awesome. So anyway, that was my story. General adoption. All right. Immune system is the system cells, organs, and chemicals of the body that responds to attacks from diseases, infections, and injuries. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're taking very good care of your immune system. Maybe you should invest in some orange juice every day because China is shutting down <laughs> the coronavirus. Are you following this? It's crazy. It is crazy. Now, there's only five cases here in the United States, and they're all in isolation. Uh, there's about 50 cases outside of China, and there's about... Uh, 4,000 cases inside of China, only 100 dead so far. Huh? They are definitely lying yeah. about the numbers that came out yesterday. That it's China like is definitely fudging the numbers. So. It's no way. They wouldn't be shutting down cities, right? Exactly. They would to a Where's degree. Where's the travel ban? Huh? Where's the travel ban? On there is already a travel ban. You're not supposed to be going to China unless you have official, official, cannot miss business. Uh, so it's a big deal you should be following. Now, ladies and gentlemen, am I saying you're going to die of the coronavirus? Absolutely not. It's not killing healthy people. It's killing the elderly and young children. So those are the people that's being affected. So, But you can protect your immune system by getting enough sleep, maybe getting the flu, va uh, the flu vaccine, which won't help you against the coronavirus, but, you know, it's still good to be preventative. It feels like the plague. Like, it's not the plague. It's not. 
What if you like wiped out China or something? It's not going to wipe out China, but it's yeah. definitely going to kill a bunch more people every day. All right, so your immune system is negatively affected by stress during times of um, like your AP exam week. Don't you all feel super run down during those two weeks? Okay, you start getting runny noses, everyone's coughing by the end, everyone's just miserable, and you're all like sleep deprived, yes, from AP week. That is uh, how your immune system is affected. Psychonumerology is how your psychological thoughts affect your immune system. So if you're just like thinking about something like a lot, like really thinking about, um, like you're really stressing about Valentine's Day. Is anyone really stressed about Valentine's Day? Yes. Is it a real thing? Yes. No. Oh, is it like <laughs> your first all. like real love and you gotta no, make it's just it right? No, you have a freak girlfriend. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, like, if you have, like, a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank God I can no longer relate, but he's very stressful because God forbid it's not, like, perfect. I'm so <laughs> done with it now. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> done with it now. Well, that's good. Why you used to be, used to be like, <laughs> birthdays <laughs> and Valentine's <laughs> Day. Like, <laughs> you, you seem like you pick really high-maintenance <laughs> women. Maybe less high-maintenance women. Maybe change that's, that's your the goal. profile. That's the goal. Change the profile, <laughs> friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're stressed out about Valentine's Day because you need to have the perfect Valentine's Day for your girl, A, you need to get a better girl. Because, like, it's nice to be thoughtful, but, like, no one should be expecting over the top. And no one wants the ugly teddy bears. No one. No one wants that. I do. So, yeah. 40. Heart disease. Heart disease is caused by stress. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go because you have a bunch of stuff and I'm trying to make sure you get it done in class. Heart disease is caused by stress. Heart disease is on your study guide, people. Heart disease is caused by stress. The more stressful your lives are, the more likely you are to die of heart disease. So my husband, this is how he's going. <laughs> He is a complete mess right now. He's in busy season. It is absolutely horrific. It is the number one killer of, in the United States is heart disease, by the way. It kills more people than anything else. What? Caused by stress and application. Well, heart disease. Sweetie, you fill it in. You've been in my class 21 weeks to do something. Sitting there dude, looking at me, looking at you is not helping. What? Yeah, so I thought that heart disease was genetic. It has genetic. Uh, so African Americans are more likely to have it than any other race here in the United States. There are pre, uh, genetic predispositions to it. However, heart disease is typically brought on by stress. So the more stressful your job is, the more likely you are to have it. The less stress coping you have, the more likely you are to have it. And it's the number one killer here in the United States. There you go, too much stress, there you go. Type A person, yes, there's a lot of factors, people. It's not just like, oh, I'm stressed, I have heart disease. That's if only our lives were that simple. Can we agree? That would be so great. Type A personality is a person who is ambitious, time conscious, extremely hardworking, and tends to have high levels of hostility and anger. Hi, my name is Samantha Bennett, and this is who I am as a person. This is me to a T. I am a type A personal personality to the max. I literally have enough time, and if you go over my time, I will let you know when I'm done with you. I am incredibly effective at getting work done. I've already told you, AP Psych is totally done for the rest of the year. I busted my butt, and I'm done with you. This morning, I finished AP World all the way until review, which means I finished all of my stimulus-based questions, tests, which are the biggest pain in the butt in the history of the world to make, and I hate them. I hate them. So why don't you stop doing AP World? Because... The because... She's the best at it. Yeah. Because... Because I love it and hate it mostly every moment of my life. Because I love it because I love that it's hard and my kids work really hard for me. And they benefit from me doing it. I hate it because everything about it sucks. That really does. Sounds like more I mean, yeah. questions when you describe it. Yeah. I mean, you would want to go through AP World without me, Rex? No, just you said you love it. And, and I hate it. I love equally. it and I hate it. Equally. Uh, I, I absolutely love it and hate it. I don't work that hard because I'm like, yeah, no, I love it and I hate it. It sucks. Who's going to do the next year? 
The person is taking over for me. You think so? No, I know so. No, you're coming back. I'm not coming back next year. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, I can't be. Do you think I'm going to be a good stay-at-home mom? Oh, hell no. You can have a whole personality. Oh, my God. I am not being a stay-at-home mom forever. Shoot me in the face. The only reason I'm going to stay at home next year is because, like, we can't afford it. <laughs> we can't afford it. We can't. Like, this doesn't make sense financially to me. Put a kid in daycare. All right. Type B personality is a person who is relaxed, laid back, less driven, and competitive than type A and slow to anger. I don't know. I don't know. Potter, I think you got an edge to you. So I don't think you got, you can, you're not type B. Aiden, I think you got rage. Do you have rage? Yeah, I got rage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. I, I'm not putting that on you. I'm not putting that on you. But a type B personality is like, you're Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just like, Cool, bruh. You're Chad and your brads. Those are your uh, uh, type B. Okay, you're Chad and your brads. Like, super low key, don't really kind of care. Those things. Type C personality. Our pleasant but repressed person who tends to internalize his or her anger and anxiety, who finds expressing emotions difficult. I love you, Bernstein, but this is you. Bernstein has no tolerance for people's bullshit, but she will not say anything to them. Would you agree? Most. Every time I've seen you had to deal with something, you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, do you know Emerson? <laughs> <laughs> this is Emerson to no, a T. No, she's not internalized. I've never seen Emerson rage, and I want to. I've never seen her rage, and I'm dying to see it, because she deserves it. Because people take advantage of her kindness. So I'm glad she keeps you people on your toes. And then you have a hardy personality. And a hardy person is someone who thrives on stress, but lacks the anger and hostility of a type A personality. So these are like the perfect people. These are people who just make everything look so easy and they're just happy. They're just happy. I don't, I don't have a good example for you. Yeah, guys, we have a whole week of um, personalities. So, like, this is, like, so just, uh, this yeah, is just generic. This is just, like, your generic and how stress can impact your personality. But if you're a type A, you're a type A. Your girl's a type A. So, hardy are very hard to come by. Hardy would be, uh, Michelle Obama came up in our last class. She would be a good one. Like, she just seems like a generally nice person. With all the stuff that people said about her racially while she was uh, uh, first lady, you know, she handled it with grace and kindness in the office. Yes? I mean, that takes a lot to carry that type of stuff. I like Ellen. Ellen? No, Ellen has rage. I think Ellen has rage. Yeah, she definitely does. She might be a C. I'd say put Ellen in. She goes behind the stage like, I hate All right, that. Optimus, here we go. She hates the dancing. Did you know Ellen hates the dancing? Yeah. But she does it because her fans love it so much, but she hates the dancing. She dances every day to start the show, and she hates doing it. But she does it because people are generally disappointed when she doesn't. What dancing? Okay, you clearly don't watch the Ellen show, so the conversation's over. She's just... I've watched so many clips of the Ellen show, I've never seen dancing. Optimus, our people... Who I expect positive outcomes. This is not Samantha Bennett. This is Samantha Bennett. People who expect negative outcomes. I am a doom and gloom kind of girl. Everything's usually on fire in my world. And I like it that way, because when it's not on fire, it's kind of a surprise. Like, oh, how am I excited? If you expect the worst and get, the, and get anything go. better, it's a good thing. Um, it's in the AP Modern Box. Yeah. Yeah. You can only go up. You can only go up and walk by. AP Modern Box on the counter. Terrible. <laughs> Okay, uh, that should be pretty much it for you, yes? Yep. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are an optimist, you're going to live longer. Isn't that exciting? Literally. And you're a healthier person. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel. Look at 2020 so far. Everything's on fire. Everything's terrible. We lost troops, almost went to war. That's nice. That's nice, and I'm glad they're trying. And COVID died.